Hello and, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the Penguin, Penguin Prof, Prof channel. channel and welcome back to the Fabio playlist. If you have not yet met Fabio, you can click there or in the description box and watch our introduction. And we also did a video where we introduced you to molecular model building in so much as why you shouldn't be scared of it. And we promised you that we would dive deeper into molecular model kits and today is the day. Yes, when you are looking at molecular models, there are two general ideas. There's a ball and stick model and a wireframe model. The ball and stick is a very simple model. It's very popular in introductory organic chemistry and it has balls that are representative of atoms and sticks that are bonds. So you just make bonds by inserting in the pre-drilled holes and you make a carbon hydrogen bond. Isn't it magical? Ta-da! So if you want to make, for example, methane that looks like carbon, hydrogen, 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 CH4, you do this four times and you end up with methane. And you see it's tetrahedralin shape and it corresponds to this formula. If you want to make ethane, which has a carbon-carbon bond and has its CH3, CH3. You pretty much do the same thing. And can you make a... Sure. It's what I live for. Actually, this was the kind of kit that I had when I was in organic chemistry. And I'm going to blame any future arthritis I have in my later years to these little ball and stick models. That's all, I have the other half. So you have two CH3 units that you put together and you have a thing that looks exactly like this. It's kind of pretty. And you know, I think even though these are simple models so far, the thing to think about is that you're gaining practice. The goal is that you're going to need to be able to look at structures on paper and imagine them in your mind in three dimensions. And by building models, this is, this is how you're gonna get that skill. Yes. and. So if you have on paper something that looks like this, now you have a carbon-carbon double bond. This is ethylene. And you want to build it with your models. You use still the normal sticks for the carbon hydrogens, but to make the double bond, you need to use the flexible ones. So you can actually take two CH2 units and you insert them like that. So you get one bond and to make the second bond. You do this and then you bend it. And you end up with ethylene. You see, you have a double bond and the four hydrogens. Can you make a triple bond? You can do it, yeah. You can do the same thing if you want to make a triple bond. You just, so you make acetylene that looks like this. Now the hydrogens are sticking out 180 degrees. You end up with this. Can I and see? You see it looks. That's kind of cute. I like this one. Now, don't be fooled. They don't have this kind of curvature, right? It's just, this is the logistics of using these kind of ball and stick models. Yes, actually, this idea, this way of making models comes directly from uh, Jakubus van Toff, who believed that atoms were a small chunk of dense matter and specifically carbon atoms were tetrahedral in shape and they made carbon-carbon bonds just by joining vertices. So in about 1874, he came out with the very first molecular model set made out of paper and it had tetrahedral carbons. So his models were not very different from these. Hey, is this what you were using my cereal boxes for the other yes. day? I just can't leave him alone for a minute. So Look at this. So they were made out of paper, like this. Yes, exactly like this. And he was saying that if you join the two tetrahedra by a vertex, you make a carbon-carbon bond and you make ethane, like this. So this is the, the center is the carbon-carbon bond and these are the four, three hydrogens on one side and then the three hydrogens on the other side. Oh, I see that, I see that. Then if you want to make a carbon-carbon double bond, you join this vertex and this vertex. So it, they are joined through an edge, mm -hmm. and that's the carbon-carbon double bond. Wait, wait, that's, that's this one? Yes. And the hydrogens are sticking out where I have my 
fingers here. And if you want to make a carbon triple bond, you have one, two, and three vertices. So they are attached by a phase, and you have the two hydrogens sticking out like that. Now, I have to say, you'd have to be a pretty creative thinker to look at that and imagine this. But you know, for a first Van go, Tauf. that's not bad. Van Tauf was a genius. Okay, so how long did this model that he came up with, how long did that last? Yes, now we know that this is actually not true and that atoms are not small chunk of matter with a specific shape, but it took Linus Pauling in 1931 with his hybridization theory to come up with a better explanation. And actually the, the wireframe models are based on Pauling's hybridization idea. And they're a little less intuitive, but they're a lot more accurate. So if you see, you have a lot of different pieces and they have written on the arm, it says sp3 in this case. So you can separate them sp3, black is carbon, red is oxygen, blue is nitrogen as always. And these are sp2 hybridized carbons and it's written on the side as well. I can verify that. And then you have a lot of other pieces that you, are, that you actually will not Ooh, need. Nice, okay. Those are metals. Yeah, not for today. Carbon makes four bonds, this piece has only two, so you have to join two together and they will snap like that to make methane in this case. So I have to say that something that students struggle with with these wireframes is that these pieces all by themselves don't actually represent anything in that sense. It's not like you can clearly see like with the ball and stick, oh that's the atom, that's the bond. You have to actually put them together like this, and then actually, if we stick the hydrogens on there, it's going to be even more clear um, the comparison between the two. Okay, so now they look much more similar, but there's some real advantages to this. Yes, normally hydrogens are not specified as you don't draw normally in organic chemistry, so you would say this is methane, and if you want to make ethane, that's CH3, CH3, you join two of them like this, and then you can simply make the carbon carbon bond like that. And that's the equivalent of this. If you want to make a double bond, now you have to use different pieces. You take a double bond piece and an sp2 carbon. Now these per se don't represent anything, but you need to put them together. There is not together in the same way and you will end up with ethane, which is that. You see the correspondence is pretty much the same. The main problem with this way of representation is that the angles inside the hydrogen-carbon-hydrogen bond are fixed at 109, which is the tetrahedral angle. While if you want to make Ethylene, like this, these angles should be 120 because they are 360 divided by 3. So this angle is slightly too small. And these models are very good for very simple molecules, but they won't actually be accurate enough when you start building up. While these are 120 and they are a lot more faithful to the right bond angle. We'll see that in a moment. So for example, if you make benzene, that's C6H6, it's a six-membered ring with three double bonds in it. And if you build it, you end up building it like this. And you see that the angles do not match. So this angle is a lot smaller than this angle, which is not what's supposed to look like. And in the wireframe, you see that the angles are correct. They are all 120 degrees. They are all the same. So there are real advantages because if you start making big bundles with this ball and stick approach, the holes just won't match. So I hope that you guys can see that there are advantages and disadvantages to both of these types of models. And you know, the, my suggestion would be that you got to get out there, you got to play with these things and start to see how they work and start to translate what you're seeing on paper to what you can build in three dimensions. And I think where we're going to go from here in the next video is discussing those hashes and wedges that you guys draw all the time. And students really hate those. Um, but, you know, get used to drawing these things and building them. And um, trust me, it's going to make a big difference.
So as always, if you found this video helpful, please show us some love by clicking those buttons down below, like, share, and subscribe. Join me on Facebook, follow on Twitter, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.